The CEO of SoFi, Anthony Noto, just casually announced a whole new business launch. And I am so freaking excited about it, I thought I'd break it down for you because this could be huge. And I really do mean that. So I'll give you a little bit of my, my sort of former investment banker insight as to what that could be worth, how that might roll out. I'll show you the number one competitor in the space and round it up with why this may or may not make sense. So stick around till the end. Before we get cracking, I want you to do one thing. I want you to learn how to make money from your money. And it took me years to figure this out. And then we figured it out. And now I run a small portfolio publicly for the community. We made 126% in 2022, 105% in 2023. That's return on capital employed. And so far this year, we're up, actually we're slightly up a little bit more than that now, but about $5,000 on a $30,000 portfolio. We're winning about 74% of our trades. And you might think, oh, that's, that's luck. No, it's not. Been doing it for ages. And it's actually based on a very simple premise, which is three rules, full automation. So once we set up the trade, we don't need to look at it ever again. Doesn't that sound nice? So I, I do this in like two or three hours a week. You want to learn the exact setup that I use, like all of it. I'll run a live trading training on Tuesday evening, Eastern time, 8 p.m. New York time. Come and join me. It'll be fun. And you will learn this. I'll give you some handouts and the whole thing. You will be able to walk away with the, the full core knowledge here of that. So come and join me. Felix Frenzelog slash webinar. Uh, the sign up page for that looks like what? I thought I had it on the screen. I don't. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. All right. Well, you'll find it down below or we'll overlay it or something. Um, now, let's um, dive a little bit into this. What is the business opportunity? The business opportunity is something very sexy. Something that you can never, ever escape. Tax filing. Yes, tax filing. Now, I'm not allowed to write that out. Microsoft says no. I don't know why, but no, you're not allowed to write it out, but you get the idea. And why is that an exciting business? Because there is a competitor I know very well. I'm a shareholder. And it is Intuit, indeed. CEO of Intuit left for PayPal. Another interesting side story. And you might think, no, 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 Intuit is a, is a small and medium enterprise. It's a small business um, company. Well, FTX was also a customer. <laughs> yeah, they ran the whole FTX thing, $50 billion in QuickBooks. So you can't make this stuff up, can you? But they have 90 million consumers as customers and 10 million businesses. They might make more money out of the businesses, but yeah, 90 million consumers. That's a big pile of, of consumers. And why does that matter? Well, I'll show you some data at the end of this here. Intuit's trying to become a SoFi, and SoFi is trying to become an Intuit. It's a really interesting uh, perspective here. And let me show you why I like it. On the left side here, I've got... SoFi data. On the right side, I've got Intuit data. So I'm going to just run you very briefly through the core data of both. So SoFi has got, it's growing very nicely, um, just about profitable, not super expensive. Intuit, on the other hand, great cash flow, growing very nicely, very, very profitable, and again, not super expensive. So good business, that. And I'm not going to run you through everything they do, but they do do, they do do, that's a funny sentence, isn't it? Um, electronic filing of federal and state income tax returns. The consumer segment provides turbo tax, income tax, preparation products and services. Credit karma segments other consumers with personal finance platforms that offer home, auto, personal loans, credit cards and insurance products. Can you kind of see what SoFi is thinking here? This is one of the bits we're missing. Well, and insurance. I think insurance will come too. So they, are, they, they basically connect all of that together. And if you look at margins here, right side is Intuit, left side is SoFi. Why are we using that funky green color? Let's use a SoFi blue, shall we? 80% gross profit margin, I see on both fronts, but the revenue at Intuit is way, way, way bigger. It's really profitable, very nice return on capital, long-term earnings growth is significant, 49.5%. So business has been around for a long time. And... 
there is some serious overlap here. I'm not going to run you through every bit of financial here, but just to show you, they brought in 4 billion or almost 4.7 4 billion in free cash flow in the last year. So it's a really brilliant, brilliant business. And earnings we don't care as much about here. But this is ultimately it. This is from an Intuit presentation. I did an investor conference last year. There's like a 180 page document. If you're interested in Intuit, check it out from the investor relations page. And I really like the way they're looking at this. And at the moment, so far, it's largely it's a consumer business, right? I do think they'll take on small businesses, but right now that isn't the focus. But what do consumers do? They want to get loans. SoFi does that. Insurance, they haven't done that yet. Savings product, they have. Spending, credit cards, yes. Taxes, they are about to do that. Paying bills, you can already do that. You can get paid into it. So it's just one of the bits, the tax part here, that is really missing. I think insurance is going to come potentially after that. That's a regulatory nightmare. I've got a good friend who set up a reinsurance business. It's a regulatory nightmare. But doesn't mean you can't, can't do it. Possibly they could acquire a small insurance company. That's how they got the banking license, right? Buy a little company and then just roll out more products, put it on the SoFi tech stack, and then you can roll it out. But yeah, 90 million consumers here. Pretty cool. AI-driven, apparently. Everything is AI-driven. Did you see that toothbrushes are now AI-driven? I kid you not. Go to Costco and you'll find electric toothbrushes. They'll say, powered by AI on them. Is that an indicator? We might be nearing the top of a bubble, perhaps? I think it could be that. And I think once they've got done the whole right side here, the next thing will honestly, yeah, go into small businesses. Do payroll. Do loans for that side possibly an accounting software. Just integrate it all, right? Even though QuickBooks is a relatively decent software, I use it for a bunch of businesses that I have. But even to that, to get all the accounts hooked up and all the data in, it's still a pain in the neck. We still have to pay a wonderful accountant, quite a lot of money. She is actually truly wonderful. The most, the only ever wonderful accountant I've found. She's Ukrainian. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, but that's a side part of story. I think they could catch it all. And this is a growth path that no one's looking at. And at the same time, what does Anthony Noto do? He under promises. Why does he under promise and how does he get away with it? He does the following. He looks at Moody's, you know, the rating agencies, the guys who are to blame for the 2008 bank failures. Yeah, that's the guys, you know, the ones we trust and love and who cherish and respect us. They're those guys, uh, the brown envelope jobs people. <laughs> that's the only way I can explain 2008. Lots of like brown envelopes. Anyway, Moody's sort of put out a, a forecast of the economy and they have a bull case and they have a bear case. Which one does Anthony Noto pick to base his economic projections and therefore growth forecasts on? Always the bear case. And that has a 10% chance of happening. Seriously, that's how bad that forecast is. So it's no wonder you always beat. And I'm always surprised that for every single earnings event, analysts are like, oh, really? It is better than expected? Still baffling. So I've got trades open on that. You want to see what those look like? Come and join me on Tuesday. We are expecting to make some serious money with, with SoFi this year. And it'll be simpler than you think. Seriously, I promise you that. It's three rules, really just three simple steps. We do them again and again. We automate it so we can go out and enjoy ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend or a golden retriever. And I thank you for tuning in. See you on the next one. So far, it has frustrated many investors. You look at the stock chart, you get these sort of euphoric moments. It feels like it's all going really, really well. And then the opposite happens and it comes back down to planet Earth.